Okay, so here we are. We're on a site in Yorkshire. This is a structural waterproofing job. Um, it's an interesting one. I thought you might like to see this because it's a new build property, which basically the waterproofing's failed. We've been called in the year after and the client's left with a building which you can't continue with because water's coming in. This is a, a very common problem we're coming across nowadays. Basically, uh, type A waterproofing, that's external waterproofing. Um, if it's tested with a head of water, which it will be, if for instance the drainage is poor, um, it will tend to leak if there's any workmanship defects. BS8102 tells us that we should always expect some workmanship defects, even on the best run site. And that's not a criticism of the builder at all. It's just natural. You only need, in effect, um, a pinhole. And if a head of water comes to bear, it will get in. The difficulty is, once a building's up, you can't repair that defect. The defect's obviously on the external envelope, it's below ground, and the entry point of water internally may not match the place where water's coming in externally, so it can't be maintained. And in these situations, we'll get called in and often it'll go, as we have in this case, for a Type C waterproofing system, which is a cavity drainage system. So as you can see, this is ground level. If we look at the property here, um, looks like a normal house. Actually, it's typical of the houses around this area of Yorkshire. It's cut into the, um, into the bank of the, of the hillside. And in fact, we've got two levels below ground. If you look down there, we're about 15, 20 feet below ground at that point. Clearly, wet day like this, we've got lots of rainwater in the ground and it will find its way percolate down there under gravity and get in if we don't protect the house. The existing system is working mainly, but only one place is needed for water to get in and it'll cause a lot of damage as it has in this case. So there we see our nice beck running along the bottom, that's what water does. And of course, in a way, we've got exactly the same structure as that we are built into the side of the hill where our building is. Um, so now we're down on this client's patio there's his beautiful house and unfortunately he's had water in. So let's start at the bottom and work up. We've got standing water in the basement. Obviously this is a big problem for our client. Um, this is the lowest point of the development. And as you can see, it's absolutely wet through. We're going to install a Type C pumping station, a, a Safeguard Century 2 with a battery backup in it. If we get further water in later, nobody will know about it. It'll be pumped out and you'll never see it. And this is the essence of Type C waterproofing. We don't resist the water, we manage it. Okay, so we're in a split level building with many different floors, all at different heights. So you can see the membranes are on the walls. These are there simply to provide a dry surface for decoration. Funnily enough, Type C membranes don't have to be waterproof. A lot of people don't realise that. It's not a case of holding the water back, it's letting it down into the drainage channels and managing the water so it goes where we want it. If it does come in, it will end up being in a pumping station and out to the surface water drain. As you can see, we've got membranes on the wall, drainage channels into the concrete. Of course, in a brand new building, if we designed this waterproofing, all these channels would be built pre-formed in the concrete slab. As it stands, these have had to be cut by the main contractor for us. We've put our drainage in, and this will eventually bring the water, if it does come in, along these channels. We've got these half finished for you. And in the corner there, the sentry sump system waiting to be installed. This is one of the smaller of the, the sumps. There's another larger sump going downstairs with a twin battery backup. Just in case there's a power cut during a thunderstorm or something like that, that will feed power to the um, backup and obviously keep the house dry. BS8102, that's protection of structures below ground from groundwater, has been updated recently. The reason is, of course, there have been lots of claims for structural waterproofing. The insurers have paid out an estimated £30 million in the past few years just on failed basements. As a result, the standards have now changed, and often you'll find companies like mine and like the Property Care Association members uh, with surveyors who have CSSW, that's the Certificated Surveyor in Structural Waterproofing Certificate, who are asked to come along and specify the waterproofing in advance so that this sort of thing doesn't happen. Of course, if it does, we're there to put it right, but we'd much rather be involved at the design stage, get it right first time, and you don't have all this upheaval.